welcome back friends uh, today video session we will going to uh, continue the testing framework okay In the last video session we have covered um, assert j hamcrest test uh, some assertion framework we are um, uh, working on now as part of that uh, today we will going to see json asset and json path the previously we have uh, seen assert j and uh, amcrest test using that we can test java object right java object uh, we can whatever uh, test cases we are testing the return some output as a java object the java object will going to validate okay um using assert j and uh, amcrest mm. now we are going to test json file json file okay we'll going to read the json file that json file will going to validate if any values come uh, expected value i want to pass the test case as a pass otherwise it will be failure okay this this assertion framework very useful for when you working with the rest api if rest api returns um, uh, response as a json right i want to validate the json data json data in such a case we can use json asset or json path okay mm -hmm already have done some program um, it see this framework called self explanatory i don't have to explain everything okay hmm? when you, i'll give you the brief idea then you will uh, go and check the api okay this uh, library right json assert and json path we don't have to add uh, manually when you use the spring boot automatically this particular framework available okay um when you create a new uh, spring boot there is a dependency right uh, the testing dependency spring boot starter test uh, part of this uh, uh, dependency you can see those uh, assertion framework see a json path json path is there the uh, so j one json path JSON asset, I think. Uh, yeah, JSON asset. Sky Creamer, group ID has Sky Creamer. You can see JSON asset and JSON path. This artifact automatically available. So you don't have to um, configure this framework in your Spring Boot application. Okay, this comes as a free. Uh, now we're going to uh, check this particular class. This uh, JSON asset test, uh, you see here. I am importing that uh, Sky Screamer JSON asset JSON asset. Um, this is uh, a method uh, where I want to read the JSON file. Here we are not going to test the REST API. We are, not going, we are not going to test the response of REST API. I have uh, some JSON file. I want to test that JSON file. Say product one dot JSON, product two dot JSON, product three dot JSON. Let me close all the window. See product one dot json this uh, is a json file it has some data see here uh, customer uh, name address ch and the product one and the product this is a customer two uh, customer two product this is a customer two product this is a customer three this is customer three product so we have a three uh, array of uh, three data this array of json it has a three data okay hmm? okay we are going to validate this json data now for that we need to read the json file right uh, so i am using json reader json reader json reader new json reader then return json reader read json i am saying read json, JSON file nothing but uh, we have to pass that uh, json file which i mentioned in this folder there is a we have to keep it in test java this we need to keep it in test resource folder okay test resource folder under resource folder i keeping product under json product under json product under json i am pointing uh, here uh, here uh, in this argument you have to pass that uh, the valid json file that valid json file created by read json method the read json uh, the read json method automatically look resource folder from the test okay now here i am testing uh, iris i want to check the iris okay hmm? Uh, this uh, this uh, this particular get JSON return product uh, product one dot JSON as a string object. Okay, now this string object contains uh, the JSON array, the, the product one dot JSON data available in the result. In the result, I am checking JSON as a dot assert equals uh, ID one, ID two, ID three. I am checking here expected value one two three from the ID attribute. From the ID attribute, I am expecting one two. 
3. Okay, there, there is a 1 is there, 2 is there, and a 3 also there, right? So, this test case should pass. Let me verify now. Yeah, test case is passed. Let me change the ID. So it's fair because uh, there is no ID 4, right? We have only ID 3. Okay, now we are going to change the true. Strict, there is a second argument strict. I am going to change true. Let's see what's happening now. Okay, if, if I change the strict true means whatever uh, here I am checking only ID 1, 2 and 3, right? But uh, in the product of JSON, the product 1 dot JSON, you can see here there is a, a another value also, name, address, age. It is expecting this value also. Okay, expecting this value also. Okay, so if you, if you, if you pass a true, uh, it will strictly check all the values. If you pass a false, it is not like that. You can check any value. That is the meaning of strict argument. Okay, now it's passed. Now we'll go to the second test cases. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm? Now we have we are we plan to test this particular data, right? We plan to test this particular data against um, this data. So here uh, again it's failing. The reason is here I want to test one two three four five data. One two three four five data. Here one two three five four data. Order is changing, right? Because uh, because it's failed. The reason it's failed is I am passing the argument as a strict as a true. Strict as a true meaning it's expecting all the value with the same order. Okay, same order. Now I'm going to change it to false here. You should pass now. Now it's passed because I am saying that you don't have to verify all the order everything, just to verify the value alone in the result. Okay, so it's verifying only value. Then the, th the third test case is JSON after three. Uh, JSON after three test case. Here we are passing product three dot JSON. Product three dot JSON. Let me check what is there in product three dot JSON. Here I am checking, yeah, in the product here I am checking price 200, 300, 100. This value should exist in the product array. The product array. Okay, I am checking these values against this product 3.json. The product 3.json can see here. Okay. See 200, 300, and I'm, I'm expecting this uh, these values. Whatever value I'm testing here, this value I'm expecting in this product three dot price attribute. Product array of price attribute. I'm expecting value. Let me verify that now. Yeah, because the values are exist, right? So let me change that value. What's happening? Now it's failed because the product product three dot JSON does not have a uh, two hundred ten, right? Two hundred ten. It has only two hundred. Does not have a two hundred ten. That's the reason it is failed. Okay. Go to JSON asset library and check all the values, all the methods 
everything okay all are self explanatory you can try with some other uh, methods also okay hmm? Jason has set examples. Mm -hmm. Go here. There are multiple examples given here. All are easy and self-explanatory. Go on and check. Okay. Huh? Also, we have same my. Just take this example and uh, try by yourself. Okay. There are a lot of uh, tutorials, tutorials available. Jason has said. Then uh, just uh, go through that. Okay. Now we will going to see Jason path. Now we will going to see Jason path. Where is that? Jason path. Mm. The same thing here also. I am reading reading the JSON files. I am reading here product on that JSON. Then that product on that JSON available in the JSON string. Then I am passing that JSON. I am passing that JSON string to the asset document document contact, which is this API is coming from JSON path. Okay. Test case one. Here document. Uh, Get document contacts. Here is a get document contacts. Then this document contacts is this having the whatever JSON file I passed here. Now I want to verify the length of the JSON. Length of the JSON. See here, I said that I am checking. I am expecting the JSON length must be three. The JSON length must be three. Okay. Hmm? Um, the product one dot JSON, right? Uh, see here, here you can see. Um, this is the one, one the object. This is second object. This is a third object, right? So I am checking the particular uh, JSON is array is three or not here using dollar dot length. So the document or context read. I am passing dollar dot length. Dollar dot length and nothing but whatever JSON file pointed by document context. Okay. I am expecting that particular uh, JSON array should be three. After that three, after that three, whatever value you are expecting, that value we are passing, then is equal to JSON length. Whatever length returned by this API, that length I am passing. If that length returned three, this test case will pass. If it is not, the test case fail. Okay. Now I am going to pass this test uh, length is a four. Definitely it will fail because the, the, the JSON length returned three because we have only Three product object. Now it is failed, right? Okay, because uh, actual length is three, but we are expecting is four. That is wrong. JSON asset test two. Again, I am taking the JSON object using get document context. Then. Document context dot read read in the now this document context pointing the product on that JSON file in the product on that JSON file I am checking from the root element dollar nothing but from the root element there is any name attribute there is any name attribute please fix that name attribute alone and assign to my list object assign to my list object then I am printing here after that I am checking that name object contains Suresh Bharadam Kishore Suresh Bharadam Kishore. So, using document dot context dot read, I am taking the attribute name from the root element from the root object, and see the product one. This is a. Let me copy this. Yes, I'm able. So here I have a name. All the three element I have, the three element I have name attribute. It is a Suresh Bharda and Kishore, right? I am checking these three values in my test cases. In my test cases, using this particular syntax, 
there, there is a root from the root element there is an anime attribute take all the name value and then assign to names list object in that list object i am checking suresh bardhan kishore is contains or not if it is contains this this does case pass Yeah, it is passed. Now I'm going to change some name value. Now it's fine because I changed the name. Now JSON asset is three. Here I'm checking from the root element if. Any attribute contains age. If any attribute contains age, any attribute contains age that age greater than ten. Here, if any attribute contains age, take that age value here. Take that age value here. Assign to my age list array list. Then I am checking that array list. If matches that, now this age is contain only ages. Okay, now age value greater than ten. Age value any match. Greater than ten, greater than ten, then pass the test cases. Let me check this file now. The product one we have a age thirty and a age twenty and a age twenty-five. All are greater than ten only, right? All are greater than ten only. If ages are greater than ten, pass the test cases. Yeah, test case is passed. Now next one is um, here from the root element. If there is a product attribute, there is a product array object. Product array object. Taking, I am taking the product. Just I am printing the product. That's it. I am not doing anything here. Huh? So let me check what is the output here. Let me copy this for better explanation. So we have a three array object. Okay, three array object. We have a one product. Here it is printing. Here it is printing. Price three hundred. ID two. Product name shirt. Okay. In our test case, what I am doing here, product of one. I am ask, I am asking to print product of one. Product of one meaning each array object in second product I want to print. One meaning second product, right? So, in this array object, the zero element, we have a three product. The three product I am, I want to print product of one. See two shirt three hundred. Can see here uh, two shirt three hundred. Similarly. See from the root element. Okay, from the root element, we have printed a uh, one-two product. Similarly, the second product in, in the second array, there is another product array. Again, I want to print a one element. Second, we have two ice cream two fifty. See uh, two ice cream and two fifty printed. Again, I want to print one array from next array.
here product one element from craft item 602 craft item craft item 602 okay so meaning of this particular um, syntax is from the root element please take the product of the product array object from the product array object print print one array one one the element print one the element so this is the root element okay this is the root element from the this is the root element from the root element take all the product array from the product array print only uh, first element first element nothing but it's a second element of your product array this is the first element okay then We will check this is working correct or not. Okay, now this is just what I am doing here. I want to I want to read a product uh, one dot JSON from the product one dot JSON from the root element. If there is a product array, in that product array there is an attribute called price. If the price greater than three hundred, take that product alone. Take that product alone and the print here. Here I am taking only the greater than three hundred price. Okay, greater than three hundred price we have. Um, What is the file we are reading? Product one dot JSON. Okay. So here in the third element, in the third product, third element we have a greater than 300, right? Only three product have we have a greater than 300, others are less than 300 or 300, right? Our expectation is you should print only this item. When you look at the output here, Let me run again. Here, where we have only product displaying which is greater than 300, 600, 500, 900, sorry, uh, 750, right? So, okay, let me go with some examples, uh, some uh, tutorials. This is JSON part, right? JSON part, yeah. JSON part tutorial. So we have a lot of examples here. Go and check all the examples. Okay, all are self-explanatory, easy to understand. Okay, go and check those examples. I will add this in the video description. Okay, these test cases are very useful when when you write a REST API. Okay. Okay, so far we have completed um, assertion framework and um, how to mock, how to run the unit test cases, how to create our own mock object, right? How to create our own, own mock object. If you missed that video, please check on the previous uh, videos. Uh, I explained how to mock the J unit test cases while writing it. For example, where I want to test um, a particular scenario, that scenario connected to database, but I don't want to connect database. I want to check only my logic. In such a case, I want to bypass the connected database. I want to check only the logic. So, in such a case, we have to mock our object. 
to avoid the DB connection, to avoid the external connection. Okay. So that example we have seen previous video. So go and check that previous video. I will add that uh, video, video link. The next video without writing the code, without writing our own mock object, how to mock the Java object using Marketer framework. We will go to see that. Okay. Hmm? Uh, this is the example, right? I have done previously. See here. Uh, um, mock object i created a mock object using this mock object i am already to connecting database okay now without writing this code how to create how to uh, mock our object how to bypass the db connection external connection this thing we're going to see in from the next video using market of framework okay okay guys uh, until then bye bye from fresh still not subscribe this channel please subscribe it Share this video to your friend circle. Click bell icon for regular updates. Thanks for watching this full video.